All right, lecture 10, the one everyone's excited for. And this is the final one for the project, components of a professional report. So what's the goal? I want you to be able to explain to me, and I want you to be able to produce essential components to a professional report. And remember, the whole point of this whole project was for people that are moving on to engineering, psychology, sociology, and the humanities, that next year when you head into one of those courses, you know what the expectation is for a project. You have a template, and I've given you this template, okay? So, um, can you create that? So let's take a look at what's involved here. So there's two final tasks involved in, in terms of creation. Uh, I, need a, I need conclusions, okay? So, you need to look at your report, you need to look at your, your analysis of the data from uh, assignment 9, and uh, with respect to what you've identified, you need to write me a one to two page summary of what conclusions can be drawn from your project. So you are basically answering the, the thesis question, the thesis, the thesis you made a statement. I will be investigating this. So now here's your chance to draw your conclusions, and it's okay to be wrong. Okay, I can't stress this enough. If you find out that your thesis was incorrect based on the data you collected, it is not a failed report. It is actually you showing maturity, understanding that, no, apparently uh, what I thought was going to happen didn't happen, and here are some of the reasons why. Here's the statistical analysis. So, you've done all the trend analysis. You can just draw your conclusions at this point. So, in the analysis, I was looking for... Uh, I was hoping for five or more, so each of those trends, they may be individual, you draw a conclusion statement from each one, or maybe two or three of them are paired together to give me a big picture, um, but that's what I'm looking for here, and that's the big thing here, is I want it linked to the bigger picture, I don't want you to say, I found in my report that concussions are bad in hockey players, and what's the bigger picture? Bigger picture, the conclusion is, current standards of hockey uh, equipment in Canada is insufficient to protect against concussions. Okay, that's a conclusion, because you can show, hey, people, young, young males and females are getting concussions here. What we're doing is not working. What can we do to, f this is a problem. So it has to be coming back to the big overall picture, and, th and that's the important part for me. Okay, so there's the conclusions. Recommendations, and, and people freak out on these for some reason. Recommendations is the next step. And this is you, again, telling me if you were, let's say you are going to take this course next semester or next year, what's the next stage in this report? Or if I was paying you to do this report, what would be the next report? So it discusses the next step. What further research, research should follow or what action should be taken? I want this to be maximum one page. Okay, it's probably going to end up being more than a paragraph for a lot of people, but it's a write-up to tell me what should I do next, okay? What is the next step? So to compare this to the real world, if you are going to work in a, a field of research, this leads to future research grants. So you'd be looking at, hmm, I've just investigated this, but now this is cropped up. So you apply again to get more money for further employment to do more research. It could be if you work for a company or you end up working for the government, it could change company or government policy. Okay, these recommendations. We should make sure that mouth guards are standard for all hockey players. You could be changing uh, how Hockey, hockey Canada uh, looks at their equipment requirements. You could be recommending to the government that um, this particular uh, drug policy uh, needs to change to improve... Uh, improve our crime rate okay so what you're basically doing is you're telling your employer you're telling someone well, here's the next step so it's important for you to, you to put forth suggestions that reflect these points so I'm expecting something that involves uh, some thought okay as to what would be next so don't disregard this don't slush this off and write this up in two, a couple minutes because I am looking for that connection and understanding where you demonstrating I understand where my project falls into the big picture. This would be the next step uh, to enhance or to bring forth change. All right, so those need to be written up. And here we go. Here's your checklist. This is your checklist for the final project. And this is not a suggestion. This is what I'm going to be or will be part of your mark. Okay, so remember we talked about the project, it's about, it's worth about 30% of your term mark, okay? This is the 30% of the term mark, 
okay? So going through the checklist, I want a title page, okay? I want a letter of submission, and there'll be a rich text file uh, under Lesson 10 here, or Lecture 10. Uh, just fill in the blanks. You're not creating anything there. Uh, the letter of submission is basically putting your name in, putting a title of your project in, and signing it, okay? And don't forget the signature, okay? So many people hand this in, don't forget to sign it. Okay, so not very complicated there. Table of contents, okay. Table of contents, I need to see that. Now, uh, for people who are going into engineering, um, technical reports, they usually have a list of figures. Um, so I'm going to say this is optional, okay. Um, but list of figures is basically a list of all of your graphs, all of your pictures, and so on and so forth. So just keep that in mind, okay. Now the thesis comes next. Well, you've got the thesis done. Okay, that was what way back in, in previous assignment, assignment three. Then comes the background research. This is done. Previous assignment, mind map. That's done. Variable analysis. You've already handed that in. That goes in next. Data collection techniques. Done. So the majority, all of those assignments that we've handed in or submitted, is the bulk of this project. The survey. Put a copy of your survey in done. Data analysis, you've already done that for me, done. Then it's the conclusions and recommendations that you have to write, so there's your checklist, and then the bibliography, which should be done because the only time you had to create the bibliography was for the background research. All right. So the bulk of this project is just organization at this point, and please make sure you put it in a duotang or some kind of project cover report. You can come pick it up. You can get it back. Um, so, but it looks a little bit more professional. I want you to get into the habit. If you're going to do it, do it right. Okay. So there is your checklist. That is the order. It's not the recommended order. So there's a difference between a suggestion and an expectation. Part of your mark will be: Can you sort stuff and put it in the right order? Okay, it's a funny thing. I've had many students come back talking about university and colleges that they got it handed back to them because they do not have it in the right order. All right, so it's very important that you follow the instructions and you are able to get that in the correct order. So there you go. There is your, you have created a professional report and that will be the 30% of your term mark. Moving on here, final summative task. So uh, we have our exam worth the 30%. 10% of that is going to be this project right here. You need to create a 10 to 15 minute video presentation. So our first assignment on the year was talking about how do I make an effective presentation. You got some feedback, and now you get to do a 10 to 15 minute video about your report. So use the skills that you discussed at the start of the course to incorporate the work that you've done within the course to produce this video. So don't just paste up um, your, um, don't just paste up, you know, page 17 in your report, okay? We've talked about what makes effective slides, okay, in a video, um, and, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for you to be able to do an effective presentation um, with, a, with a slideshow, and the slides should be, as we discussed, representative uh, of the project. So you don't have to go out and do extra research. You've got all the research in front of you. It's that final project, that final report. You are basically taking this material here, and now that the basically me as the employer or your boss uh, saying, this is a great report. You need to present this to my bosses. So now you take that report that you've created, and you, are now, you have now have a 10 to 15 minute uh, slot in their meeting to do a presentation on your report. This is not uncommon. Uh, if you plan to be in the business world, uh, plan to be in education, uh, myself, I've had to do this before as well, where I did a little bit of a research project. Someone came along and said, yeah, this is kind of important for other people to hear. You have 15 minute time slot. You need to do a presentation on this. This will happen in real life. So it's very important that you can take that material and you can pick out the high points and you can give the people in the room a presentation on what you, what you covered. So there you are. If you have any questions, you want anything clarified, um, but again, the expectation is a video of you doing the presentation. So if you need to use a smart board or whatever technology, we can make sure the rooms are assigned accordingly, um, and we will get that, the particulars sorted out. Anyhow, good luck.
and uh, it's been a pleasure working with you on this project. So good luck with uh, the final, final material.